Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This past Easter was the 40th year since I was baptized on Easter Sunday when I was nine years old. Realizing this and the fact that I will enter a new decade of life if I live to mid-November has prompted a bit of retrospective evaluation of myself, my life, and my faith. Certainly sounds like a midlife crisis, doesn't it? One of the topics I've been thinking quite a bit about is how I was discipled. I realized that I was taught about several of the disciplines that help one be a Jesus follower. Things like church attendance, prayer, service, and of course, Bible reading and study. Over the years, however, I've learned that there were some disciplines that I was not instructed on very much at all. Things like solitude and rest, fasting, journaling, and meditation. Now, when I'm talking about meditation, I'm not speaking of some new age idea of meditation where you sit in some particular posture and hum to yourself trying to connect with the deep inner self or the great cosmic force. Biblical meditation is different than that. It's also different than Bible reading, Bible study, or even Bible memorization, as it is one of the disciplines that disciple, of discipleship that we don't seem to practice a lot. Biblical meditation is a slow, focused concentration on a particular scripture, thoughtfully considering it from every angle fleshing out every application, and just taking time to intimately know what a passage says, means, and how it will affect you. Many of us approach the scriptures like TV advertisers present their products. You have 30 seconds to make an impression, a pitch, and a sale before something else grabs our attention. Bible reading programs are absolutely great. But sometimes we are so captivated in accomplishing the reading, we totally miss the content. I believe it may prove far more beneficial to really know and understand one chapter of the Bible than to have read the whole thing. Obviously, both are preferable. I'm just trying to make the point that we are probably moved too quickly through Scripture and seldom linger long enough to let God talk to us. So what I'm planning now is to do a series of devotionals, basically walking through Psalm 16. This is a beautiful poem that is chock full of encouraging truths. I think that they could be simultaneously comforting and challenging for us to consider. So let me share with you my goals for the series and especially for those who would commit to this journey that I'm offering.
first to read and reread the scripture because I know the repetition of hearing it would aid us in hiding it in our hearts. And the repetitive reading is step one to meditation. My second goal, to take time to consider the individual phrases of the psalm, their meaning and their applications for our living. Third, to keep those who are willing to journey alongside each other connected by prompting, sharing, and prayer with one another. But I also have a couple of requests for you, if you would consider them. Number one, and this is the easy one, click the subscribe button uh, in the YouTube channel so that you will be notified when new content is released. I hope to release every Wednesday before noon. Second, commit to reading the psalm once before watching each devotional and read the focus verse of the week each day of that week. Three, invite someone you know to journey along with you through this series. This will be a person you can share and discuss with. Discipleship is not supposed to be an activity done alone. Being together with another follower is crucial, but if you can't find a discipleship partner, please commit anyway. Four, and this is the big ask. If you're willing to make a commitment to this meditation journey, I'm going to ask you to send me an email letting me know you're on board. My reason for this is first, though digital connections are wonderful for spanning both distance and time, they are horrible at fostering life transforming commitments and accountability. It's too easy to say to yourself, I'll do this and answer God's call to it and then excuse yourself from a God left prompting later. We live in an age when commitment is very casual, and there is just something binding about a simple response like this email. Second, it will give me a way to send some special instructions and content for those on the journey. And finally, I'll be able to more personally pray for those who are participating. The first meditation will be up next Wednesday, May 13th. Till then, may his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm.